one of the most fundamental rules of the universe is that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, and the more massive you are, the bigger the cap on your top speed and energy. But what happens when things go above that cap anyways? Light and neutrinos are quite speedy, but they do have it easy, they weigh practically nothing. But to energise something just a little bit more hefty and speed it up to just a fraction of the speed of light, like say a proton or a neutron, that takes a high energy event like a supernova, a supermassive black hole, or even a gamma ray burst. These ultra high energy particles are called cosmic rays. These particles move at relativistic speeds, which means close to the speed of light, and range in energies, but the highest energy ones are expected to be from outside our galaxy. As these cosmic rays travel through the universe, even if they didn't lose any energy to say gas clouds or galaxies, they can't escape the cosmic microwave background, or CMB. Interacting with the CMB caps their top energy to 50 exa electron volts, or 8 joules, which is less energy than that of a tomato. This limit is called the Griesen zz spin kutzmann limit, and what we need to know is cosmic rays can't exceed 50 exa electron volts, so we shouldn't be detecting anything that crazy then, right? Wrong. The highest recorded energy of a cosmic ray belongs to the oh my god particle, which had a measured energy of a whopping 300 exa electron volts. This is the GZK paradox, or cosmic ray paradox. It seems these particles are disobeying the laws of special relativity, which are some of the most unwavering ones in physics. So how do we go about solving this paradox? Well, it's actually pretty simple. First, the GZK limit assumes the cosmic ray is a proton, and while that's true 90% of the time, it can also be a heavier nucleus containing multiple protons and neutrons. It's very difficult to distinguish between these types of cosmic rays at the moment, so this is definitely a possibility. Secondly, it's possible that our equipment just isn't sensitive enough to detect at this higher energy. Or maybe these particles were actually created nearby through some unknown event, so they haven't actually travelled far enough to need to even invoke the GZK limit in the first place. If they were very close, we'd hopefully see the event that created them, either through neutrinos and light. Although, I don't think any cosmic rays have aligned with an event thus far. 